Guys, what a day. What a day. It's weird because I didn't, I, I don't go live on YouTube like that anymore. So the overlays that are on right now are from my Twitch channel. Um, I had a, uh, I don't know if some of you guys know, I guess, um, me and my partner having a baby and we were on our way to one of our midwife appointments. And I parked the car and I get my phone and because we were trying to figure out we were a little early. We we're a little early for the appointment. So I grabbed my phone and open it up. And I I I think I opened up Twitter and I saw something and I was like, what? I actually saw Geekdom's post saying confirmed. And I was like, what? And then immediately after that, Danny from Ms. Mahawk hits me on text. This is like, you know what's crazy is there's been like three other times. No, two, three, yeah, three other times that this has happened. Like, where in life you have people that have affected you. never met them but they inspired your life hit you in a particular way you know first for me was MJ right like growing up Michael Jackson was everything so like I remember I remember when it happened I remember finding out I remember and I remember me and Toshi just on the phone, like, like this can't be real. Um, the next one for me was when I was, when Steve Jobs died, I, I was actually working for Apple. And I get home from work and I see the posts and I was just flabbergasted. I remember we went to the store the next day and it was the first time ever that the Apple store turned off the logos. For those that don't know the Apple stores, some of them still do it, but the Apple stores all used to have light up apples. The Apple would be lit. And it was the first time the store, any of the stores ever turned off the Apple logos. Um, Obviously, Kobe, I was driving. I woke up in Sydney and I was on my way back to the Gold Coast and I was driving and I shit you not, I did not listen to music. I was just driving in silence. I had woke up that morning, my dad texted me, Kobe died. And I was like, what? And That was a shock to me because it was like, I didn't really know that he had impacted me like that. You know what I'm saying? And he told me that and I looked at my phone and I'm going through stuff and I'm like, there's no way this is for real. 
I drove eight hours by myself in silence because I was so confused about what was going on. This one is this one hurts way more than I thought it would. <laughs> you know, it's crazy, like all these people to me, I never I never thought what it would be like if that person didn't exist anymore. You know, like nothing it never crossed my mind of like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like it just never did. I mean, none of this is way too close. So like for me, it was seeing that earlier. It was just it was the worst, bro. Like. And it's oh, man, the timing is crazy. For those that don't know, I started um, an anime personal development channel called Built by Anime. And uh, I just did a pod um, episode with Nasser from Legends of Dragon Ball Story. I don't know if you guys ever saw that incredible Dragon Ball fan film a couple years back. Like, just insane that episode isn't out yet on that channel, but we were just talking about how how that show impacted our lives. You know, like how powerful it was and why why we resonated so much. So like to to have like this to have this happen, like and just it be such an abrupt an abrupt moment is it's it's really hard to it's hard to process you know people always talk about in anime communities oh what's your top five what's your top five and i always tell people like you know my top five are these five i was like but it's really dragon dragon ball is my number one like i i just never put it in my top five because it was like it means something to me more than anything right like it's just it's something that is it was a point in time in my life when I when I saw it and I had never seen anything like this before and it was the the first kind of episodic show I ever saw where like the next episode literally picked up immediately after the episode before it right like it was this immediate experience like hold on so tomorrow is the very like it continues like this is the craziest thing like oh my god like this is amazing I'd never seen anything like this before right and like you had shows that would have like two part, three part things like, oh, like X-Men will have, you know, this episode, part one, part two, part three. And then they were the LinkedIn lens. And then the next episode was like, you know, 15 days later or whatever. Right. This was the first thing I've ever seen like this. So I was like, I was just enamored by this story and this guy that just for whatever reason, just could, wouldn't give up, like whatever goal whatever obstacle he just surpassed this obstacle there was no limit there was no barrier that he couldn't just go beyond you learn about the power of friendship and all these things that like are commonplace now in anime that people just take for granted as a trope the power-ups the you know the first time you see kyle ken and you're like oh my god this is incredible like what is going on and his muscles are getting big like you just as a teenage as a young boy going into uh, becoming a teenage boy like it was like the coolest thing ever but then you're dealing with like the first time i had seen a cartoon cartoon because i didn't really know what anime was at the time we just thought it was a cartoon and you're seeing people die and like you you're crying you're emotionally attached and i'm like why why am i emotionally attached like i'm i, sh I shouldn't be emotional like why is this so you know what i mean like it's the first time i've ever experienced anything like this you know like and for those that know like the first time you see super saiyan happen when you're a kid when it was airing on toonami the first time that happened it was the craziest thing the crazy it was like what like it was the wildest thing so much so you had you know how you have kids growing up watching sports and they emulate 
Jordan, Kobe, people would try to go Super Saiyan. Like this is a real, people would try. Everybody knows if you saw Dragon Ball as a kid, you tried to do this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Like, I just feel like how this felt, like, even growing up, like, you know, when I was going through, like, family problems, parents get divorced, and I'm I'm just lost. I This was the show that I would go to, to to help me get through that type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? It was like my escape. Man, it's it's just it's it sucks, bro. It's it's fucking terrible. You know, it's um it's always fun to talk anime and all that stuff and you know they're fictitious characters they're not real they're not real people but you still resonate with characters that for whatever reason you align yourself with whether it be their belief systems whatever they're focused on sometimes you see who you want to aspire to be in them or they connect with you in a particular way and you know obviously it's become this you know funny thing to Oh, well, Dragon Ball's basic and blah blah and this and that, but it's like it it started all of it. It started all the main shonens that you love, the creators of them grew up watching and reading this stuff. You know, like and it's it's crazy how much this one guy has inspired a generation of not even one, multiple generations of athletes entertainers storytellers musicians like it's crazy you know it's it's just one of those things like it's because we all joke about it you know like every nobody's nobody's trying to be serious about dogging somebody's work you know what i'm saying like oh you know if you're if you like dragon ball you're just a basic blah blah and this and that da, da, da. it's like yeah for the times that we're in now sure but where do you think it where do you think the originator where it originated from you know what i'm saying i'm not saying that he didn't got he wasn't inspired by other works of art and other stories and x y and z but the progenitor of what we all feel is shown in anime is dragon ball like it is what everybody is so hype about nowadays and the transformations and and the tropes of anime and shonen this was like this was the beginning of it you don't get naruto without goku you don't get sasuke without vegeta it doesn't happen it doesn't happen you know what i'm saying It's just crazy like i get excited i used to get so excited when you'd see like you know the, the little kid in you you get excited when you see people on twitter going crazy about a dragon ball episode like i remember when super was on and you see dragon ball super trending number one on twitter you're like whoa this is wild i never thought i would see a kiritarama trending because of this that wasn't You know, like, oh, man, that shit is, that just sucks, bro. Like, it, and it makes you think, bro, like, as much as everybody wants to joke and we all done it. You know, he forgot this in the story and no, oh, he changed this because of whatever. And, you know, his, you know, Trunks' his hair was purple. Now it's blue. And oh, the only reason that he stopped weren't using the tails because he didn't like drawing them. Like we talk about all this goofiness and whatever, but he left a mark. He left a mark, bro. Like he left his mark here.
And it's like, dude, like, all the all the ridiculous that we talk about, he he at least left it though. He he created it. You know, we could talk about the inconsistencies and the scaling issues and blah blah, but he, we're talking about his work that will live on, and people will then. I don't. We don't know what Toei's gonna do with it. We don't know if Toyotaro's just gonna pick up and and continue the the story and all. We don't know. But I think we take this shit for granted a little bit too much. And I think sometimes we forget. Like we forget. You know what I mean? Like we, we just we forget the the value that these things actually have to us and we don't appreciate it enough when the people that are still here creating these things are here. We don't you know what I'm saying? It's it's wild. Like I was never thinking of that. I was never thinking of that. I was never like, oh, well, you know, Dragon Ball's still going. Like, you know, there's no end in sight. It's still going. We don't know what's next. It's still going. And it, but the person that is, that created it, we never thought that that person would no longer be here. Not at 68. You know? But it's, man, it just, I, I never, I, I don't like doing these types of videos. Like I really don't, but I was like, I didn't know who to, you know, get it off with, with, you know what I'm saying? Like people that grew up with it, watch it, really understand it. Y'all know, you know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all get it. It's, it's just it sucks it just fucking sucks you know and then like his fam it's like i don't even know what his family's feeling like like they know him as a completely different person it's so crazy like i never even thought like was he married do you have kids did you know did he have siblings like i know nope, i've never thought of that ever never thought of it we were just so enamored by the thing he created for us. Like, man, this is the coolest thing, you know? It was just such a... Man, it just... It freaking sucks, bro. Um, I want to read this real quick. Uh, Hickson said, His work will be remembered for generations. I bet my life on that. That's how much of an impact he had. I mean... It's been emulated so many times. It's been emulated so many times. It's been referenced in shows like The Simpsons. Cart other cartoons have utilized it. We watched Romero. Uh, uh, we watched um, Slime. They did it when Slime. The Dragon did it in Slime. Went Super Saiyan did a command mail. Like we have rappers talking about uh, what's his name. Um, uh, was it uh, Frank Ocean? The dark pink matter, cotton candy, Majin Buu, like that. We have artists that reference Dragon Ball. Other, in other mediums. Like for you to have that type of impact in something that wasn't even recognized in the West like that. Like for everybody that's like, oh, big three, big three, you know, go Dragon Ball was the big three. There would be no big three without Dragon Ball. There would be no big three. What do you think? Why do you think ja Japanese animation studios started to push towards the West is because Dragon Ball Z went gangbusters. It was the only reason 
You know what I mean? It's the only reason. If it didn't, if it didn't pop, they wouldn't be trying to focus on putting more stuff on on Toonami. Like, this wouldn't happen. This wouldn't happen. And all and the crazy thing is, it's only in the fandom that's like that. The authors of these other properties, Oda, uh, they they reference the goat. They reference Akira Tama all the time. Like, no, he was the goat. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just. It's just crazy, bro. Like, it's crazy. And look, I I I hope that I hope that whatever these companies end up wanting to do with Dragon Ball, they don't just go crazy with it. I hope that they respect they respect Akira Tarama enough to not just go gangbusters and start putting out a whole bunch of shit because you know what I'm saying? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, let's, let's not just start running with it because it's a hot topic all of a sudden, you know, you're already working on Daima. Cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't, I, I really hope, I really hope, um, I really hope they don't just like start cash grabbing shit. <sighs> but man, it's this shit sucks, bro. It just sucks. Like you, it's it's one of the most profitable IPs out of Japan. It's probably the most profitable anime IP outside of Pokemon. Pokemon is probably still the most profitable in terms of revenue. Dragon Ball is probably the most profitable shonen. Um, but regardless of the fact, right? Like, did I read Kishimoto's statement? No, I haven't. I haven't. I've been trying to, like, stay away from it because, like, it's just been making me more sad. You know, like, it's... But... Like, we understand that it makes money. I just hope that they don't start trying to be like, oh, let's do this, do that. Like, and, you know, who knows? Maybe they maybe they give the full reins to Toyo Taro and say, hey, like, you, you've you been here for the longest. You've been taking over the majority of everything. Like, I don't know. I don't even know, like, what that means, you know? But all I know is, like, I wanted to come on and, and just thank you akira Toriyama for all all that he's been able to do for me for the for the fandom for the genre you know like like a real pioneer bro like a real pioneer with it i just i man i just That shit is fucking crazy, bro. And it's just like, we're at that age, bro, where it's like mortality starts to knock. You know what I'm saying? Starts knocking on doors. And you're just like, what? Obviously, he's not like a super public person. You know, it's not like we always were on Instagram and you saw everything he was doing, but you never thought like, ah, oh, well, you know, I hope he's going to be okay. You know, like you're just waiting for the next Dragon Ball thing. Like, okay, what's, when's the next chapter coming out? What's the next series? Are they going to continue super? Like, you know, but yeah, I just, I know a lot of people probably feel very similar to me right now. Just, a gut punch bro like i would rush home from school and it's crazy because i would get home from school and still have like four hours before <laughs> before it aired and i'd just be like wasting time waiting for dragon ball z to come on and i put my vhs in just to record it so i could record it me and my brothers be watching, bro. I'm talking about sweat, bro. I'm talking about like sweating while watching it, cause I'm like so excited about seeing the seeing it. And I'm like, you know, hot and crazy, bro. I used to love it, love it as a kid. 
And then when Dragon Ball Super came out, when Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods came out, and I was like, what? What is what's going on? And then found out that Super was gonna be, I was like, this is this is crazy. And who would have thunk that it would have took off the way that it did? It didn't have the greatest start. Who would have thought it would have just did that? Who would have thought that it would have had a whole new renaissance of whole new resurgence of popularity? Like I knew I grew up with it, but I was like, it may not hit for the new gen. Nope, it hit. <laughs> it hit like crazy. That might have been the first anime to break Crunchyroll. Broke it. Broke Crunchyroll. I think it broke it twice. I was like, that's crazy. Like, crazy. It's just absurd, bro. It's absurd. <laughs> but yeah, it was just... It's just so wild to think about it, bro. Yeah. Brought home from school just so I can watch Dragon Ball Z on Toonami back in the day. Yeah. It was, man, it was... It was such a simpler time. You know what I'm saying? Like, and at that time for me, like, there was no... There was no, hey, who's all watching Dragon Ball? Who's That didn't happen. Not when I was going to school. That wasn't the cool thing to watch. And I think that's probably why it feels like it does to me. Because it felt like it was like a me thing. It wasn't a me and a community thing. It was just, I, I, me and my brother watched it. My cousins watched it. We talked about it when we saw each other. But like, it wasn't, it wasn't like we had big communities that we can just chill out and talk to and wasn't like that you know and then like i would see clips or like little sprites of like trunks i'm like who's that guy what what is that and you see like you know dragon ball gt clips and like hold on what what this is in japanese what is this like it's just online on different forum sites and you're like no oh, this is crazy i don't know what's going on here wild wild and that's probably why you know what I'm saying? that's probably why we are a lot of us are so attached to it, it was because like it was kind of just us in the show it was just me in the show you know what i mean like me in the show bro that's all it was it's just so wild to think about it's just so wild to think about it's it freaking sucks it sucks so much and I know a lot of people are probably like, what's next? What's an I to be honest with you, I understand. I can understand the well, what's gonna happen to it because you're you you love it. And I, I hope that people don't look at that as a disingenuous feeling. Cause I can understand. You're like, I love this thing so much. Does that mean it's it's gone? Does that mean these characters are gone? Does that mean you know, like and I think I can understand if people felt like that and feel that way. I hope that people don't feel, don't get villainized because they feel that way. I can understand how somebody could get to the point of, man, we're never going to see these characters again. Or like, they may not be the same. I can understand how people get to that point. For me, I'm just like, I'm like, damn, like, I just, I don't even know. I, don't, I honestly don't know how to feel about it you know what i mean like i if it ended now i'm cool if it doesn't i'm cool i just i'm just feeling like it just sucks that the person that created this thing that i love is no longer here you know like and it's like the same it's like the same thing it's like the same thing, same feeling that MJ, same feeling of Steve Jobs, same feeling of Kobe, like same feeling. Like I never met this person. And they all affected me in a different manner. You know, like, it's just wild. It's just wild to think about. Code, 
code man said i heard he was in the middle of working on a few projects i mean i think the sandland thing i think there was a whole another thing he was doing with that dragon ball daima like like there were some things in the works for sure and i'm pretty sure they're probably he, he may have even been working on some for a movie i have no idea but as a creative like I don't even know what I don't even know how his like contemporaries feel or people that looked up to him that were actually in the space. Like like Kishimoto, Oda, like I wonder how they feel. They're closer, way closer. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know their relationship, but like I would imagine growing up in Japan wanting to be a mangaka and seeing you know seeing that seeing him and saying man i want to i want to aspire to be that like one of your idols you know what i mean and say kishimoto and oda already sent messages i believe it i just i can't read that on i can't read that on stream i'll probably fall apart Oh, the Kishimoto as much as were sad, 100, they showed a lot of respect. I mean, it's, it sucks, bro. Like it, like it just, I, I think that's the thing though. Like knowing like the people that we also love their stories, Naruto, One Piece, were inspired by him. So they must feel Ugh, they must feel broken because not only not only did they love his work, they loved it so much that they wanted to tell their own story and then proceeded to do so. You know what I mean? Like what I I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine it. It's like when you saw NBA players when they found out about Kobe and they're just on the court like flabbergasted immediately crying you know what I mean like it's I can't even I can't even imagine bro but Hopefully, like I said, hopefully they do right by his IP. You know, hopefully they do right by it. Cause like, that's, that's the toughest, that's the toughest thing is when somebody goes that has created something and then it's continuing up by someone else's hand. You're going to have so many people that will be frustrated no matter how it develops because they're like, oh, well, he will never do this or he. And it's like, you may not know what he would have done, which sucks. But I feel like people are going to have this like disappointment already with any decision that's made with Dragon Ball. You know, like, oh, well, he would have never done this and this is trash now. And, and I'm afraid of that, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? I'm afraid of that, to be honest. But. JMU said, I can't stop crying, bro. I understand. I understand. It's so wild, man. It's crazy, too, because I was on a Reactiverse podcast not even a week ago. And I got asked about Dragon Ball and I got asked about, is there a character in fiction that, that you like love? And I was like, Goku <laughs> right here. And why, why that character meant what he meant to me. You know what I'm saying? Like that push that it's just, it's just rough, dude. It's, and it's so crazy because we still have them. They're not, they didn't go anywhere. They're not going anywhere. 
but there's just something about when you lose the person that creates it. Like, why is that? Why is that so painful? You know what I mean? Mike leaves. You still have the music. Is it? Is it the idea that you that you're sad that you never get new music? Right? Steve had all these crazy ideas. Like, I wonder what ideas he would have came up with. I wonder what he would have thought of next. Kobe was done with basketball. Why? Is it, you know what I'm saying? Like, Dragon Ball's still here. Like, we can go on Crunchyroll right now and watch everything up. We can watch all of it. It's still there. But for whatever reason, because the person isn't here anymore, it's like, it's almost like the soul behind the art is gone. You know, like it's what it feels like. It feels like you're missing something now. It's so weird. It's so weird. Or maybe you just want to see this person grow old. You know, you just want to see them live the best life possible. You know, like, man, I wish you would have just got the opportunity to grow super old and max out life. You know what I'm saying? Like, you deserved it. Maybe it's that. Maybe it's like you just wanted to see them live out the rest. You know? My friend who's really into the Dragon Quest series is absolutely devastated right now. I would imagine, bro. I would imagine. <sighs> Soul said his art will never be replicated. I mean, it's 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 one of those things that you know when you see it. Like his art style is so distinctive. As soon as you see something that looks like you're like that's Dragon Ball. Like it it has it. You know what I'm saying? Like that's probably why nobody does eyes like that. The the like the sharp like there's a particular look that you know that's a Dragon Ball character. You know it. You know it from the eyes. It's the eyes, bro. It's the eyes and the face shape. You know it for sure. You know it. Man. But Danny, he had hit me and he was just like, he was obviously upset as well. Like, for storytellers, bro, like, and that, that grew up with it, that you understand how valuable of a storyteller he is. And again, I think we just take these things for granted because we have so many amazing storytellers now. And we just don't, we don't appreciate like, man, like this shit was great when it came out and we first saw this, it was incredible. But man, I don't want to keep, you know, beating a dead horse with it. But yeah, just, I'm always going to have always gonna have goku in my shit it's always gonna be my number one at all times for show sure. that's not changing and that's one thing that's that you know all these artists that have you know done fan work and in their own stories with it like we keep this shit alive bro you know what i mean we keep this shit alive And my girl got me the Dragon Ball Z, you know, all the all the mangas and stuff over here for Christmas. Like Bree got me that for Christmas. So it's just dope. Like I actually have have that. Fucking sick. Ugh. Yeah, man. I'm just, yeah, just, it just fucking sucks, dude. I think you put Akira pick on Rishi's speech to Goku and killing before. What? I don't understand what you meant by that. I'm sorry. 
This man was working to the day he died, man. He was working on several projects. Truly was the GOAT. He was a real artist, though, man. Like, that's what I mean. Like, no Dragon Ball jokes. Not today. I mean, this is the thing. Like, people are always going to, like, it's one of those things, bro. Like, Dragon Ball has already, it had, it's out of debate. Like, it's never been in debates. And I try to tell people this all the time. Like, certain things, certain things are just out of competition with stuff. When you have something that has created how things are, it shouldn't even be in the conversation for the best. It created it. Do you know what I'm saying? It, it started the movement of that. I'm not saying it was the first action anime. I'm not saying it was the first popular anime in Japan. I'm not saying, you know, oh, he there was no stories before Dragon Ball. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is what people think of action shonen today is because of this, is because of it. It, to me, it's it's always been in like legend status. Like you don't like, oh, what's the top five? That's why, why, I, why personally I don't put it in there is because the, of the emotional attachment that I have to the property. And I've said that multiple times on so many shows that we've done when people ask me what my top five is. I'm like, Dragon Ball is my number one, but I don't put it in my top five because it means something different to me. If I'm going like, oh, if I, yeah, shows that have the best writing. Yeah, there's shows that have better writing. There's shows that have better animation. There's shows that have better character development. Cool. But it doesn't mean that it's going to replace what it did for me at a particular point in my life. Like there's a connection to it that there's no other show that can replace what it did for me then. So it doesn't even matter. You know what I'm saying? Doesn't matter. But in terms of like impact, people can talk about, oh, the most iconic form, blah, blah, and this and that, and this, this new form, blah. I'm telling you right now, there's no form that will ever surpass Super Saiyan in terms of iconic status. Does not happen, won't happen. It just won't. Because it was the thing that made transformations popular. It's what was the progenitor for everything else that followed. You know what I'm saying? Like the whole tropes of things taking forever in anime kind of started with Dragon Ball. It started there of just shot, reverse shot, reverse shot, reverse shot, reverse shot. Stand there. Look deep into your eyes. It started it. It was the thing that did that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it started it. YCA Prodigy, what the fuck, bro? A hundred dollar super chat says Toriyama is making his way across Snake Way to train with King Kai. Rip to the legend. Rest easy. First and foremost, thank you so much for that. Uh, I was not expecting that, nor do I, nor do I expect anybody to support on that level. But I appreciate you. Um, but this is the shit that I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like. It started these things. Why, like, compare compare Naruto to Bleach, cool. Compare Naruto to One Piece, cool. That's a different class. Does that make sense? It's a different class. Dragon Ball graduated class way more, more way further ahead of, of classes. You know what I'm saying? You class of 2005. This is a class of 95. It's not the same thing. It's like what you're doing. We started. It's not the same thing. He said, Dragon Ball is the OG's OG. Bro, it, it, and again, I don't want to get caught up on this, like, we have the best anime. Like, that, I don't, it's not about that. It's not about that. And it's never been about that to me. When people talk about which anime is the best and blah, blah, it's all going to be, sub, it's all going to be subjective. You know what I'm saying? It's all going to be subjective. When you saw it, how, why did it not resonate with you? Did it resonate with you? Why did it resonate with you? Why? Some people aren't even gonna know. You know what I'm saying? They're never gonna understand what Dragon Ball Z was like for us in the 90s. You're never gonna know that, ever. 
It was a different time. It was at a time where if you didn't see it on TV that day and you didn't happen to have a VCR to record it, well, guess what? You didn't see it. You had to wait for Toonami to restart the series <laughs> because they didn't have all of it dubbed. So they had to go back and wait. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You had to go back and wait for this whole thing to restart. You won't know that feeling. You won't know the feeling of that being really the only anime like that out there. That Sailor Moon Pokemon was out there, but it was obviously, we again, a lot of us didn't know that this was anime. We just thought it was cartoons. We just, we just knew something was different about them. We didn't know that it was anime. Some may have, may have, I'm not going to say we all, some may have been super, super keen and understood it, but for a lot of us, Especially ones that like myself that I was into sport and music and stuff like that. I wasn't, I, you know what I'm saying? Like I wasn't like the super hardcore hardcore, but I was definitely one of the ones that was drawing Dragon Ball Z characters all the time. I was, you know, I had t-shirts. I had the silk print shirts with the Dragon Ball art on it. I, I was that far. I was on the websites looking at, you know, little forums and stuff. I was that far. But it's just, again, it's just one of those things, man, like you, sometimes you just won't know. You won't know, bro. Like, nowadays, like, you have a thousand animes you can watch at any given time. You can start and stop it whenever you want to. And while there is excitement around new properties and stuff like that, there was just something different about going home and me and my brother watching Dragon Ball Z hype as hell so excited you know like <sighs> man <laughs> City is said, man, my man got tired of me screaming, Kame, Kame. Bro, I remember one time, this was when Goku this when Goku killed Frieza. Or not killed Frieza, beat Frieza. The first time we were watching this for the first time, we we're downstairs in the living room, me and my brother watching, and my dad comes down and sits down and he's like, What are you guys watching? He's like, oh, man, it's like a poorly animated. <laughs> and he sat there and watched the whole episode, though. He got locked in for a second. Like, I remember, like, I remember that, you know? There's just, man, there were so many moments of that show that just hit. Just hit, bro. <laughs> Kimali said, bro, that's literally my dad. Yeah, he came in talking shit about it and then sat and watched the rest of the episode with us. <laughs> oh, man. Jamie said, stay strong, guys. I appreciate it, brother. Bro, he said, every time I say Kamehameha, I gotta say. And see, here's the thing. So. Some of you guys are like, why do you guys say Kamea? Why do you say Kamehameha like that? For those that don't know, the ocean dub said Kamehameha. And they actually called it a Kamehameha wave. So I just grew up saying Kamehameha, not Kamehameha, right? So that's why. And that's a generational thing. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Kaioken, like, bro, like the but see ours was Kaioken, right? Not the Kaioken. He said Kaioken. So it was like there were so many things that are from the ocean dub. You know what I'm saying? The ocean dub. The ocean dub was still that's still my favorite dub. That's still my favorite dub. I love the ocean dub, bro. Over 9,000 was Ocean Dub. Exactly. People that are always like on these over 9,000, blah, blah. 
Ocean Dub. Ocean Dub. Man, I was about to, I was I have my my Dragon Ball sneakers, bro, that I'm selling. And I'm like, I don't even think I want to sell these motherfuckers no more, bro. To be honest with you. And I'm emotional right now, so I don't know if that's I don't know. I'm just emotional right now. So it's probably an emotional decision. Like I don't need the shoes, but like it's just emotional. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, I don't want to sell these motherfuckers now. You know what I'm saying? Like in my head, I'm like my emotional response is like those were when he was still alive like i don't know if i want to you know what i'm saying like i don't know if i want to buy something post post toriyama you know what i'm saying it's like a, it's, a, it's like a different it's different i don't know again i'm emotional right now so i'm not really in my sound mind yeah over 9000 is from it's from the ocean dub right and it's like people don't even know they don't even know bro like that's not i man and i'm just like even the people that worked on the project bro that were voice actors for dragon ball like man shimmel sabbat like the whole squad like they probably feel some type of way bro like they, I mean, they've been the voices of these characters in English for the longest time. You know what I'm saying? Like, obviously, they'll still have work and all that. That's not really what I'm saying. Like, they're just uh, associated with with the heart of the show. So they got to be going through it, too. That's got to suck, bro. Bro, I got two copies of DBZ and Dragon Ball. We'll keep it safe. Hey, bro, do that. Dragon Ball inspired me to go past my limits and everything I do. Joe Mills, I hey, I'm with you. It's over eight thousand what it's supposed to be, nine thousand happened because transition error. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, we understand that. But the over nine thousand, him saying that is iconic. For people that don't even know, like on Toonami, how they would have like the little adverts for the thing that's coming up before Dragon Ball would come on and it would have like you know the little clips from all the from that season of stuff before Dragon Ball Z came on. It's over nine thousand. Like that was a part of the whole tsunami ad. Like <laughs> crazy. Oh shit! And it's the year of the dragon. God damn it, bro! Come on, bro! Come on, bro! And the year of the dragon. That shit is crazy. Why well, say price? So keep your head up, G. We gonna get through this. I mean, for sure. It's just shit. Just fucking sucks, bro. Shit is just ass. Fucking sucks. Do you think they should end the story? Honestly, I don't know how I feel about it right now, to be honest with you. Like, I, it's one of those things for me, bro, that I feel regardless of the fact, you're going to have people that are for it and against it. it you're not going to have 100% of people that are, that are going to be on either side. As long as whatever the, whatever the, Whatever the motivation is, is what's important, right? It's like when Chadwick Boseman died and they were like, you know, in respect to Chadwick, we're not going to continue the T'Challa storyline. They're not going to recast it because they wanted to pay homage to him. Keep in mind, Black Panther as a character is like 80 years old like it's a very old character right or 60 years old i'm i'm wilding out but you understand what i'm saying but i could also see that people will be like well to honor him you want to keep t'challa alive and keep the stories going and recast and keep telling the story of t'challa 
So I can understand both sides of if the intent is to do to do good by a person. It's just one of those things that people will never know what the intent is. They're going to assume the intent because they don't know who's behind it. They don't know the people themselves. So while they can say, hey, you know, we want to continue the story that Akira Trauma started and blah, blah, and pay homage to him by doing that, you're going to have people that will say, no, it's just a cash grab. You're going to have people say it regardless, even if they are genuinely doing it because of that. But because they don't know the people that are doing it, they just assume it's a cash grab. But then ultimately, you have people that will do the opposite, that will say, hey, we're going to stop Dragon Ball completely full stop uh, to pay respects to Akira Trauma. And you have people be vehemently upset about that. So lose, lose regardless. They're not going to win in that. It's just more so of hopefully they do, you know, they, whatever they decide to do, um, I just hope it's for the right reasons. Alien Lizard Therapist says, Dr. Slump, Dragon Ball, Chrono Trigger, and Dragon Quest. What a resume. What a resume. <laughs> what a resume, bro. Yeah, man. Man, I just, I was, man. Obviously, nobody's expecting anything bad to happen to people and stuff like that. But I just, today was not the day. I was not expecting that, bro. Like, complete gut punch, bro. A complete gut punch. He impacted three mediums of entertainment for 40 years. Facts, print, digital, vi like video and video games. Crazy, bro. That's unreal. Unreal. So DBZ has been a big part and I'm 32. Didn't think I'd even care, but I can't ignore the impact DBZ Dragon Ball or even BDS. Or Dragon Ball Super at this point, but it hurt for real. Yeah, man, this shit is this shit fucking sucks. And I know we keep saying that, but it does. Twenty seven, been with me since five. This that's the crazy part. Like you think about these stories and these characters, and shit is terrible, bro. Tendo Mendo said. Um, Goku going Kaioken against Frieza failing then getting back up I could never love Goku and Dragon Ball after that he gave us Frieza I can never not love I know but it's man like it's it's so crazy too because even me and Jamie were talking about this on um we were talking about uh, Dragon Ball on her podcast. Um, that episode is a lot later. It's episode nine of the Built by Anime podcast. I, I sat down with Jamie Uwu, and um, obviously we had our, our Dragon Ball conversation for sure. Because uh, for people that don't remember, her name used to be Super Mecha Frieza, right? So, um, but yeah. Definitely, um, ah, oh, man. City so said 30 and watching since I was four. Isn't that crazy? Like, just think about the times, guys. Think how long we've been, we've been consuming a particular character. You know what I mean? Like, and like seeing their journey and what they've been through and the kids that they had and like it's kind of wild it's like you grow up with these characters he said what's the name of that channel i'll put it in the um i'll put it in the chat for you guys um Uh, let me see.
I think this is I, I think I have to actually type it out I think this is it I think so let me just double check if it works yeah so I'll just pin it so if people actually want to go there they can and I'll probably end up doing like a special video on built by anime for this like I'll probably put something together that's a little bit more polished on on it and why it's so important to me because I there's a big reason why Dragon Ball specifically is so important to me as a kid. Um, but that channel that I just put up is called Built by Anime. It's a channel I started um, because an anime saved my life was the reason why I started this channel. And this happened last year. I started this channel um, for people that want motivation through what we love anime you know what i'm saying that have these philosophies and mindset and things like that and and being able to create content for people that may need some personal development but referencing things that we love so it's a little bit more understandable and how to apply it to your everyday life and then i wanted to sit down with all these people, we just talked about how Dragon Ball literally changed and moved mountains and had musicians, athletes, directors, writers, singers watching anime. So the podcast is me talking to all these different types of successful people, their stories, their journeys, and whatever it is that they're doing and how anime has influenced them, inspired them, and did whatever, you know, helped them along the way in their journeys. Because I was like, man, like, if you guys haven't seen the video, go check it out. It's called um, um, I Would Be Dead But Villain Saga Just Saved My Life. It's on that channel. And this happened at the top of 2023. A lot of you guys don't know how bad it was for me. But after that i was like i have all this knowledge and personal development and a lot of you that come and watch my reactions know how i usually reference real life scenarios and things and break things down and certain things that i watch it's because of that so i was like i want to be able to provide this type of information and insight then to people that may be in a similar situation that i was in or are just looking for development in a way that they want to digest it in because let's be honest personal development isn't a sexy it's not sexy at all it's not something you go to man can't we take this next book unless you really got the bug for it so it's like all right well there's tons of crazy amazing philosophies in anime tons of them and all these different shows that we watch and the characters and you know what i'm saying so that was the reason for this channel um so the podcast is that right so like i was saying nasir from legends of dragon ball tale the one that did that amazing fan film he's actually on episode four that comes out this thursday um not this Thursday, because it's Thursday for you right now, but Thursday, like a week from <laughs> a week from today. Um, but yeah, it's a, uh, it's just a, it's amazing, bro. Like, and now it's to be honest, this is another milestone event in my life. We all have these moments of where were you at when. You know, like, where were you at when you found out this? This is one of those for me. Like, I'll never forget. I'll never forget it. You know, it's. It's actually just wild. It's just wild to. It's just it's it's hard to digest. It's hard to digest. YCA Prodigy said, your wisdom is unmatched in the community. 
your inspiration of mine for sure. You're an OG bro. Been sub to you for a lot, for a hot little minute now. Glad I found you. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you so much for real. It really means a lot. Cause I know a lot of people were asking me if I was gonna do other content. Um, and I told myself like, I wanted to do something that was going to be valuable that could, people could utilize as to that they that they felt value out of like I got value out of watching this you know and to be honest with a baby on the way like I want my kid or kids in the future to have something a reference of like they're gonna be anime fans like my kids are gonna watch Dragon Ball you know what I'm saying they're gonna watch anime so I'm like how can I help them get this information of people's success stories in real life scenarios and how to get through things with anime. You know what I mean? So that was the idea. And hopefully, hopefully it continues to grow. And that's why I'm, I'm trying to really focus on quality content over there for that. City said, but DBZ will always be the anime I go to to just feel good facts bro like i i've seen so many episodes of dragon ball z mo like <laughs> i've seen the whole series of i've seen all of dragon ball z 10 11 maybe 12 times for real all of dragon ball z i've seen dragon ball all the i think i've seen that one time through i actually want to do a rewatch of it um and then I had a one-time watch of GT. Everyone did the com uh, the command may oppose, right? Bro, facts. Black Flash should rip Akira, I agree. Yes, sir. Zero said, I'm so sad right now, bro. I, bro, same. It's just one of those things like, it sucks that events like this bring us together for you know what i'm saying but sometimes we don't know where to go you know what i'm saying like and it's like we get to go to the to each other to kind of just get our feelings off you know what i mean um this because i think some people that aren't into anime may not understand and they may care about you feeling like you lost somebody but it's hard for them to really get the the connection because they they aren't connected to it like that and it's not their fault. They're just not connected to it like that. That's not, and it's not their responsibility to be connected to it. You know what I'm saying? So it's amazing that now in this time, we have this ability to chat with each other about a loss like this that we all feel, you know? Definitely in an era. I mean, it's impressive how one work can impact so many people all over the world. It is. But the crazy part is, it's not even the fact that he did. It's the fact, again, it's timing. Nobody was checking for it in the States. At least we didn't know that they were. We didn't know that people were really checking for it until, to be honest, nobody really knew how many people were watching Dragon Ball Z until Budokai Tenkaichi came out. Let's be honest. When Budokai came out first, we really started to see how many people were really watching Dragon Ball. That's really when everybody started to notice, like, hold on. <laughs> you know what I mean? You start going to people's house like, oh, I got that Budokai. Hold on. What you, what you know about Budokai? What you know about Dragon Ball Z? What you talking about? Budokai, the first Budokai, Dragon Ball Z Budokai. Yeah. When Dragon Ball Z Budokai came out, it was like, what? They look like the cartoon. Like, what? Hold on, what? This is crazy. It was like the craziest thing. And you started to see how many people were actually, that was the craziest part. One of my track friends, Will Lightfoot, awesome artist. He was extremely talented with the pen. Like, really, really talented. I was, I think we were a sophomore, oh, what grade were we? We were either sophomore, junior, or senior. It was, one of, it was 10th or 11th or 12th grade. 
and he was showing me the art he was drawing dragon ball like crazy i'm talking about crazy piccolo crazy uh super saiyan 2 gohan with the with the piccolo out like crazy like the dude's nice with it right and uh i was like man this is sick and then he ended up getting dragon ball z budokai and and he had a uh, he had a chipped PlayStation and got Final Bout, Dragon Ball GT Final Bout on there. And I, that was the first time we've ever seen this before. And we were like, yo, what? Like, what is this? What's what's Final Bout? Like, we didn't know because it was all in Japanese. So, like, we were trying to <laughs> trying to go through the menus. It was kind of wild. But Budokai came out and we started talking about it at school. And people were like, yo, that Budokai? And we were like, what you know about Budokai? Like, and it went crazy. And everybody started talking about it. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, time out. How people, how do people know about this like that? It was so crazy, bro. Like, once once Budokai came out, people were really starting to really jump on it, like jump on it super tough. Let me see, when did it actually drop? Because now I'm mad curious. Does anybody know when the original Budokai came out? 2003, 2002. Released 2003. It says developed by Dems, PlayStation 2 released in 2002, 2003 on GameCube. So 2002. Yeah, so like I said, I was, I was in 11th grade. Or no, I was in uh, 10th grade. So like... I was like, dude, I just remember how crazy I was like, though, this is wild. That was seven when it came out. Oh, yeah, three had everybody. But this is what I mean. Like, it was a game changer. We're like, hold on, what? <laughs> What's going on? That changed everything for us. Like, I feel like it became, it almost became, it never really became mainstream, mainstream. But it really got a big boost of momentum when, when Budokai came out. Because it was so sick. You're like, oh, this is wild, right? It was like 3D and you can you can fly, you got moves. Like, this is crazy. Yeah, that was sick. Shido, oh, man. He said, I cried two hours already. I, I, hey, man, I'm with you, bro. I get it. I understand. He said, why I never noticed that Cloud from Final Fantasy VII had Gohan's outfit. Yeah, bro. Yeah. How crazy is that? <laughs> I'm definitely gonna... I'm definitely gonna, but the new game Sparking Zero? Yeah, bro. Tonk Dude said, it doesn't feel real. It doesn't. It feels like... It feels like we're feels like we're in denial. You know, it feels like we're in denial right now. Is what it feels like. Mookie said, "Did you see Oda and Kishimoto's messages on to Toriyama earlier?" No, I didn't. Um I mean, I can bring it up if you guys really want me to see it. Is it on Twitter? Okay, so I'm going to try to make it through this. 
Um, I don't know if I can, to be honest with you. I'm going to try my hardest. Um, so, Oda says it's too soon to the void left behind is too large. The sadness overwhelms me when I realize I'll never meet you again. <sighs> From my childhood, I admired you. I remember the day I first named, uh, call, when, what? I remember the day I first called my name when I was what? I remember the day I was first called by name on the way home after the day you used the word friends for us. I remember the joyous moment with Kishimoto san. I remember our last conversation. Ah. Uh. Like, just think about that, bro. Think about the fact that my man's Oda and Kishimoto, Oda and Kishimoto are talking about, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're, like, understudy vibes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, taking the baton from an era where reading manga was considered foolish, you helped create an era where both adults and children enjoy manga. You showed us that manga can do this that it can take us to other worlds. It felt like watching a hero changing, charging forward. Not just for manga artists, but for all creators who were children during the serialization of Dragon Ball, the excitement and inspiration remains rooted. Your presence is like a giant tree. For manga artists of our generation who stood on the same stage, Toriyama's work works became an even greater presence the closer we got almost scary but meeting the laid back you always made me happy uh but but meeting the laid back you always made me happy we love toriyama sensei to the core with respect and gratitude for akira toriyama sensei's rich creative world i sincerely pray for his peaceful rest may heaven be the delightful world you envisioned. Sheesh. And that's, that's Oda. Or how many of us call Goda. You know, like, <sighs> A Beautiful Eye says, bad week for me. First rooster teeth shutting down and now the passing of the goat rip occurred to uh, Kira Tarama. Hope you doing well. Love your channel. Appreciate it, brother. Yeah, my friends over at Rooster Teeth just I think it was yesterday. I'm just like, yo, like uh. So Kishimoto said I honestly don't know what to write in such a sudden situation, but I want to convey what I've always wanted to express about Toriyama Sensei, my thoughts. From early elementary school with Dr. Slump to later years with Dragon Ball, Sensei's manga has always been with me, becoming part of my life, even when things were tough. Dragon Ball every week made me forget about it. Facts. It was salvation for a rural boy like me because Dragon Ball was just too much fun. It was during my university days when suddenly Dragon Ball, which had been a part of my life for so long, ended. It f I felt an overwhelming sense of loss and didn't know what to look forward to anymore. <laughs> but at the same time, it was an opportunity to truly understand Sensei's greatness, the one who created Dragon Ball. I want to create works like Sensei. I want to be like Sensei. Pursuing manga artist, I gradually overcame the sense of loss becoming because making manga was fun. Sensei was always my guiding star. 
I admired him since they might find it bothersome, but I'm grateful anyway. He was truly a god of salvation in manga to me. The first time I met him, I was so nervous I couldn't speak. But after meeting him several times at the Tetsuka, uh, is it Tetsuka Awards Judging Committee, I got used to talking to him. As Dragon Ball children, Oda-san and I talked excitedly about how fun Dragon Ball was, almost competing. And I'll never forget the slightly embarrassed smile since they gave us. I've just received news of Sensei's passing. I'm overwhelmed with a sense of loss, even greater than when Dragon Ball ended. I still don't know how to deal with this hole in my heart. I can't even read Dragon Ball. I can't even read Dragon Ball, my beloved manga now. I don't feel like I can write this message to Sensei properly. People around the world were still looking forward to Sensei's work. <sighs> if there's one wish from Dragon Ball that could come true, I'm sorry. It may be selfish, but I'm sad, Sensei. Thank you, Kirtama, for your enjoyable works over 45 years. And thank you very much for your hard work. To the remaining family, you must still be deeply sad and please take care of yourselves. I pray for your peaceful rest. Bruh. Ugh, man. Oh man, that shit sucks. You know what's crazy is because we know the work that Kishimoto and Oda have put out to the world. You know what I'm saying? Like we we love majority of people that love Dragon Ball also love Naruto and One Piece. Like if you if you've ever seen them You know what I'm saying? Like So it's one of those things of like knowing that And knowing, like, how the creators of those two incredible properties are products, essentially, of Toriyama. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, thanks, Mookie. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He said, sorry, man, just thought you should see it sad, but I think it's important to show what he meant to the current day grit. I agree. You're right. You're 100% correct. I just knew it was going to freaking suck. <sighs> man. It's, it's, man, I just, again, I... It sucks that we have to 
it sucks that we have to deal with that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Somebody asked, what are the three animes you are going to prioritize for your kid to watch? Look, I'm biased. Obviously, it depends on the age of the kid. Um... But I think Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball from the start, I want, I, I would rather watch it from the start because Goku's a kid. Um, the two for sure is going to be Dragon Ball and Naruto. And probably One Piece just because of, they all have really good types of stories, right? But again, like being able to understand the stories, it's just Dragon Ball is an easy digestion. You know what I'm saying? It's easy to understand. It's not overly complex. The principles in them are really easy for kids to understand, which is why I think a lot of us gravitated so heavily to them when we were kids. Like we just, we felt like we just got it. You know what I mean? <sighs> yeah, I just, I don't know, man. But this makes me even more excited about the other channel, bro. Like, because it, it honestly, like, seeing everybody here, to me, it, it's a, there's a comfort in it. You know what I'm saying? But there's a comfort in it. It's like when somebody's favorite musician dies and they go and they want to be around people that appreciate that person's music or, or an actor or an actress and they want to you know talk about that person's work and their body of work and it's really dope you know and this makes me feel even better about creating built by anime like it makes me feel like i'm doing something that could potentially make people feel good in in progress you know what i'm saying like <sighs> guys i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm like very like pro i'm it's so crazy that i'm still trying to process this shit I bet I said, I've been a fan of yours for five years now when you started Naruto. Hey, bro, thank you so much for being here, man. Three to 400 like minded individuals mourning the loss of a person who impacted our lives. It's, it's incredible to think about. Ashley says, Thank you for sharing your heart with us. Love from Japan. I need this more than you know. I, I appreciate you for being here. Um, and we, we get to, at least have this together, you know what I'm saying? And not feel like you're by yourself if you feel like you need to, you know, be in a community of people that are feeling a similar way. <laughs> Black Flash. <laughs> you're so stupid. Are you ready to say, are you ready to see a power not seen for a thousand years? <laughs> hey yo, every time I hear that in the that's all the thing that's all I can think about. That's all I can think about. I love it. Bro, it's... Hey, hey, for whoever just followed over on Twitch, thank you, bro. <laughs> I know it's... I know these, these notifications aren't from... I don't think they're from YouTube. I think they're from Twitch. Um, but thanks. <laughs> you're not... You're probably not here. <laughs> but it's okay. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. All of these, all of the, this is my Twitch overlay. I don't really have overlays for YouTube because I usually don't go live on YouTube because of copyright. So, um, for, I guess I'll just let you guys know if you guys want to see me do reactions live. I do reactions live on Twitch uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. So we do anime, we do manga reads and manhwa reads um, as well. So for those that maybe want to stop in, for those you guys can. But yeah, that's why like when these things pop up, it's actually not for YouTube. And which is why down here in the bottom part here, let me just remove this. Um, what? What's going on? The... Um, this part right here, this is usually the chat. <laughs> so the chat that's going on YouTube right now, the Twitch chat usually goes here, like it scrolls through. That's why you guys aren't seeing uh, the chat there. It's uh, it's for Twitch. So I just like, I don't have time to create a new overlay. I'm just going live and if it's broken, it's broken. It is what it is. Like I'm talking to you guys just raw right now. So it doesn't even matter. Um, so yeah. Um, but yeah, man, I definitely will be doing, um, kind of like a, a, a I'll, I'll think of exactly how I want to make the video. Cause I want it, I don't want it to be lengthy. I kind of want it to be a, a thank you video, but why Dragon Ball Z, why Goku is so important to me. Um, but that will be over on the built anime channel because it all that mindset with anime the all that stuff is over on that channel so it'll probably be there i won't be on the reaction side of things but i wanted to do this here because i know we all you guys all come here for for our reactions and stuff and i wanted to just kind of give you guys my I, I guess my reaction to this whole situation Camera's a collective spirit bomb. Hell yeah, bro. I know, bro. I can't believe I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Yeah. It's just, it's, it, yeah. I honestly, it honestly feels like, it honestly feels the same as MJ and Steve Jobs to me and Kobe. Like, it's the same feeling. It's the same feeling. And it's crazy because, to be honest with you, Dragon Ball Z has impacted my life more than any of them. Which is crazy. Like, just, just think about this. Let me, I'm, I'm gonna bring this up so we know real facts. So Toonami started in 98 with Dragon Ball Z. That's when it aired on Toonami in 1998, right? In 98, I was 11. So I want you to understand this. 11 was the first time I started watching Dragon Ball Z. In 98, I'm 36. That's 25 years, bro, that I've been in love with this property, this character, the, the story, like 25 years. You know what I'm saying? Like when Michael Jackson died, bro, it broke me because I was obviously in love with his music. I wanted to be a singer, performer. But at that time, it was like since I was a kid till what? 2000, when did he pass? 2009, 2010? Still, it's still a good amount of time. Steve Jobs, still a good amount of time. But I think Dragon Ball Z has been with me since, it's been with me the longest. Especially in the sense of me, in my memory. Like 11, you remember 11 years old. You may not remember when you're four. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You remember when you're five years old. Is 
Zion King said, came here in 95, and I'm 41. Like, just think about that. Think about that. You have some of these people that, like, you've been with a property for half your life. Like, think about it. Over half your life, you've been with a particular property. You love this property, love these characters. That's why we're feeling the particular way, right? Because this one person gave us this. You know what I mean? It's really special. It's really special. It's what just, it's incredible. Guys, I want to thank y'all for being here, man. For real. Thank you so much for being here for all of us being able to get this off our chest and and be okay with mourning somebody that means that created something that means a lot to us you know like this came from his head this came from his hands so he meant a lot to us does that make sense like we may not have known him personally but this came out of him i appreciate you guys for being here man um it really means a lot to me and if you guys ever need any anime inspiration or want to hear stories on how it's affected my life or others that you may look up to consider um subscribing over to the built by anime channel it's pinned to the top of the chat at the moment um, that's where I do all of that content. I just started the channel a few, like a couple of months ago. Um, so if you guys want that type of insight content, deep dives into philosophies and the animes and stuff like that, that's where that's at. And that's, it's, this just gives, gives me even more motivation to do that type of content. Nasaki, thank you so much, says, Rip to Akira Trauma. He inspired a lot of our majority of uh, if of animes today. He was still very young. Their legacy lives on in the echoes of laughter, the warmth of shared moments, and the depth of cherished memories forever. Rip. Um, yeah. But again, um, I appreciate you guys for being here, man. Um, I am going to... Well, we're actually almost at 1,000 subscribers. That's kind of crazy. That's kind of crazy. Um, I'm going to wrap this one up. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you guys so much. Again, I'm going to plug this because I feel like this actually makes a lot of sense. Um, for us as a community it's this here so this is my my baby at the moment not my real baby my creative baby <laughs> Let, let's not get this these two things confused not a real baby um what is going on here cuz what So this channel here, this is the channel I was telling you guys about. So for those that want that type of content, this is where it's at. I appreciate you guys for tuning in, bro. Thank you guys so much for being here. Be well. Um, don't forget, like, if we, we all a community. So if y'all need to chat on the Discord, we're over there as well. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to feel like... The, t the talk stops here if you need a chat we're over on the discord um but yeah i appreciate you guys man for rocking with your boy for sure and yeah catch you guys later